Hey folks, it's Eugene here and welcome to another tutorial video. This one is going to show you how you can import a photograph, an image. It could be a screen capture, it could be a CAD drawing, it could be a plan of a home, it could be whatever it is that you want and then convert it into a textured mesh. So basically a flat plane with an image on top. And the reason we're doing this is that inside of Vision 3D, that's a new software that was released not too long ago, you can attach things like tags, photo tags, or tags for videos, or for panoramic images, and even measurements to these planes. And the plane can be a, a point cloud, so it could just, just be a flat plane, like a photo that's converted to a point cloud, or it can be a textured mesh. And so the question is, how do you get a photograph into a textured mesh? And so I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, I'm going to be using Blender because it's freely available, and I will warn you that Blender is an absolute monster, okay? The learning curve on this program is not the best, but this is going to be a really simple tutorial. I'm going to point you to the exact icons and everything that you need, so you should be able to do this, okay? So, first things first, when you open up Blender, you're going to download it. I've got 2.91.0, and you've got this screen here. What are you going to be doing? You know, so you, it asks you or whatever, okay? You don't even need to click on any of these just click off of it onto the screen here the 3d view and then you've got these items here you know i got a cube i've got a camera there's like lights and stuff like that so i don't need any of that for this tutorial so i'm just going to click and highlight all of this and i'm going to hit the delete key gone okay i don't need that the controls inside of the window here, you have to hold down the middle mouse scroll wheel. Like if you hold the scroll wheel, you can then rotate. And then if you want to pan, you have to use this shift key. Okay. So if I'm moving things around here, that's, that's how I'm going to be uh, doing that. Now my mouse is acting really weird. So, you know, excuse me on that. Okay. But basically when I hold down the, the mouse wheel and ho I hold down shift, then I can pan. Okay. And trust me, it works, but it's not working right now. So I'm, I'm having a problem with this mouse anyway. What I'm going to do is I'm going to import that image. So the first thing is file, import. Okay. Now you'll hear it says images and planes. And the first time you do this, you're not going to have that option. You're going to wonder, Hey, what the heck? Why don't I have this option? And there's a reason for that. What we need to do is add the option. So in order to do that, go to edit. Oops. Edit preferences. And over here in the little search bar, I want you to type in plane, okay, P-L-A-N-E, and you'll see that it has this here, import, export images as planes. And normally this is unchecked. So if it's unchecked and I go back to here and I go import, you'll see that it's gone, okay? So you get to choose the kind of import and export options that you want here. So just go ahead and do that. Edit, preferences, I've got planes here, import, export images as planes. And I'm going to click on that. Now go ahead and go file, import, and down here, images as planes. So when I click on this, I'm going to get this menu. Uh, you know, you got to look for your image. So I'm going to go to my desktop and I have one already. It's called Google Earth Image Jevlin. Okay. So I'm going to double click on that one. So we'll bring that in here. Okay. And then we'll have a look at what we got. So right now, when I look at the image, I don't see anything on it. Okay. And the scale of this thing is about one meter. Okay. So it's just a plane. Uh, there's nothing to it. Uh, okay. I can't see anything anyway. And the reason you can't see anything is because it's currently set to a different type of view. So if you click on this one here, it says viewport shading. I'll flash my mouse here. Okay. When I click on that, you see that I can see some of the texture now because of the lighting and stuff, it looks a little bit washed out, but it actually looks better than what you're seeing here. The next thing that we have to do is we've got to densify this mesh. So if we just look at this in wireframe, okay, this guy right here, wireframe, if I click on it, you'll see that it's just a rectangle. There's no smaller patches or anything like that. It's not a subdivided mesh. It really just has four vertices, one, two, three and four. And the problem with this is that when you bring it inside of Vision 3D, when you want to add a tag, the tag will snap to the vertices. And that means that if I go back to here, if I want to put a tag here or here or here or here, it won't snap. It'll only snap to the corners. So what we need to do is subdivide this mesh. And so what I'm going to show you is, uh, and you don't need to do this. This is just for demonstration purposes. Um, what I'm going to do is go down down to, so this icon right now, object properties is selected and then there's a visibility icon. So I'm going to click on that. 
And I'm sorry, actually, a viewport display, when you go down, it says wireframe. So I'm going to click on that. So you'll be able to see the wireframe. Okay. And that's just for the purposes of this uh, tutorial. The next one that I want you to go to is this modifier properties. I'm going to click on that. And it says to add a modifier. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use a tool that's already there to help us cut this into a finer mesh. So click down and we're going to go to subdivision surface. So I'm going to click once. All right. Now, when you do that, you'll see that it has this funky shape. It's trying to smooth out edges and stuff like that. Well, that's not what we want. So right now it's on this Catmull Clark. We want to go to simple. So I'm going to click on simple. And the other thing that I need to do is I need to shut off optimal display because it won't show you the finer mesh. So I'm going to uncheck that. Now where it says levels, okay, over here, I'm going to go and click two, three, four. And you'll see on my screen, I'm starting to get these smaller patches here, this, this grid. Now you can go all the way up to six and that's where it maxes out, but this may not be fine enough for you. You may want to get a denser one. So what you can do is you can apply this modifier again. So the only warning I'll give you here is don't apply it. If you need something finer than this, then don't apply it with this at six because it'll copy it. It'll duplicate it. And then, well, your computer might hang for a little bit. So I'm going to turn this down to maybe like three. And what you can do is on this little arrow, if you want, you can just go here and go duplicate. Okay. Now I've got two of them. And now if I crank this one up and I crank this one up. So if I go four to four, you'll see that I've got this really fine mesh. Okay. And this is it. This is all you need to do. You need to cut this up into smaller segments, into a finer mesh. They're just rectangular. I didn't change the size or anything like that yet. I could export from here, but this is now not scaled properly. So there is a way to scale this. I have to go back to the object properties here and under scale, I need to scale this. So this is about a hundred meters straight across this image. So you obviously need some kind of a reference and I know what it is here. So I'm just going to scale this by about a hundred times only in the X and Y. I don't need to do anything in the Z because it's a flat plane. And even if I did put something here, a hundred, it's flat. So it won't, won't stretch it out or anything like that. So that's it. This is what I need to do. I've got the plane. Let's export it now. So I'm going to go file. I'm going to go export and I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to Wavefront OBJ. Okay. Like that. And I'll save it on the desktop. I had some other ones here. So I'm going to call this one, the dense map like this, dense map OBJ. And I'm just going to go, oh, another thing, check here. You'll see it says uh, there's some options here, selection only. It's the only thing I have in the viewport, so I don't need to even check that if that's the only thing I'm working on. And it says here forward, positive Z is forward, and this is a Y up system. So it depends which way you want to work. I just, I'm used to using a Z up system, so I'll do that. And then I can say, you know, my positive X is forward or something like that. So this just defines the way the axes are aligned. And if you do this, go ahead and go export. Okay. And then, you know, that pretty much does it over here. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to go to Vision 3D and let's just import this. So I'm going to create a new project. Now I did have a Z up. It's in meters. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and create. And I, here, this is for the point cloud import. And then the next one over is for the mesh import or 3D model import. So I did that. And we have this one here, dense map OBJ. So I'm going to double click on that. And this will start importing. Now I'm going to rotate this around. And there you go. Now you'll see that I've got, right, I've got this map here. Okay, cool. Not too bad. So I'm going to go ahead and click add. It looks good. And I'm going to zoom out. And that's it. Your mesh is in here. So if I wanted to attach a photograph, like let's say a, a photo tag, I'll click. You'll see now that I've got this red dot that's clicking around here. So that is clicking on the intersections or the vertices of this finer mesh. Okay, that's subdivided mesh. Now, if I didn't have that and I just brought in the original image out of Blender, I would only be snapping to the corners um, if I didn't subdivide it. But this is how you would get an image plane inside of uh, Vision 3D and get it with a nice fine mesh and with texture. So I think what I'll do is I will show you how to create a point cloud version with Cloud Compare and do the same thing. 
Okay, so we're in Cloud Compare now, and I'm going to show you how to turn an image into a point cloud, and then you can bring in the point cloud as an E57 inside of Vision 3D. So it's the same thing, except it's just not a mesh. And a mesh would be probably a little bit more efficient, but if you want to do it as a very, very fine point cloud, you can do that as well. So what you're going to need is the Ellipser app. So inside of Cloud Compare, there's this ellipse over here, okay, this little Ellipser app. And if you click on it, Okay, you bring up this little app. And this is something that I uh, I got made in order to do some research for just bloodstain pattern analysis, shotgun stuff, and different things like that. But one of the cool features here is that you can bring in a two-dimensional image, any photograph, any image, and it will turn the pixels to points. And you can even scale it. So let me show you how this works. First, I have to load an image under this image tab. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And I've got this Google Earth image, and I'm going to open this up. And you can see that it's loaded here. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I need to set a scale. And I'm going to do this really quickly, but there's an option here. It says use real world units. I'm going to click on that. And it says pick points. So pick point one, pick point two, and I have to set a scale. So I know that from here to here, you can see I have two sets of coordinates here now. This is actually about 90 meters. Okay, so I'm going to hit calibrate. And that's it. It's pretty much set. Now all I need to do is export the image as cloud. So like when I click on this guy, okay, that's it. Doesn't seem like much is happening here, but if you look behind you, okay, into the 3D view, it's actually sitting there. So I'm going to close this like this, and you'll see that this image now is in here. And if I zoom in really close, you'll see that it starts to break up. Let me make these larger as a series of points on my screen. So basically the pixels have been turned to points and this image has been scaled. And if I want to check it, I can bring up this little tool here and I'm just going to do this really roughly, but basically click from here and click to here. Let's say more or less, it should be about 90 meters. And you can see here it says about 90 meters. Okay. No problem. Or 90 units anyway. So great. We've got that. Now, if I, I'm going to pull this over here just so I can see some properties and I'm even going to rename this. I'm just going to hit F2 and I'm going to call this the dense cloud map. Why not? And when I look down at the properties, okay, I've got 40 million points and that seems like a little bit of overkill here. I probably don't need 40 million points, especially if I'm looking at the map, you know, more or less from, from far away. So. I'm going to subsample this point cloud and I've got this selected and I'm going to use this here. Okay. So this is the little subsample tool and it says spatial subsampling. What's the minimum space you want? So I could, I could probably get away with 10 centimeters, but we'll stick with five. Okay. So this is in meters. So 0 0.05 and I'm just going to click. Okay. So basically what it's going to do right now, it's going to go through this point cloud. I set it to five, actually five centimeters. And so every five centimeters, it's going to clear out the points in between, you know, any two points, which are five centimeters. So it, it makes this nice grid of points that are evenly spaced at five centimeters. But what that does too, is it's going to lighten the load here right now. It's 40, million points for this image. And once it's done, it's going to maybe put it down to, I would say less than 5 million points or something like that. That's, that help. That's very helpful. Okay. Let's see what we got here now. Oh yeah. You can see. So here I got the, the dense cloud map that's subsampled. The original one is still there. If I click on that, that's 40 million. If I click on this new one, you got 4.4 million. Okay. Perfect. So if I want to call this, I don't know, I'll call it a five, uh, five centimeter. Okay. That will be my point cloud. So this here, I can now just export. It's scaled, it's converted, scaled, and I've even subsampled it. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to click on the save button, and I'm going to go to my desktop, and I'm going to call this the dense cloud map five centimeters as an E57 file. That's one of the formats that you could import into Vision 3D. And I'm just going to let that write that out. Perfect. Now, let's go back to Vision 3D. I'll create a new project. Okay, it's Z up, it's in meters. Yes, great. And I'm going to bring in the point cloud now. So point cloud, and you'll see it's right here, dense cloud map. Perfect. Bring that in. Let's see what it looks like when it gets imported. So that's it right there. And you can see I can get pretty close, right? So certainly good enough for, you know, viewing what's there and for adding tags. So I'm happy with that. Click add and yeah let's just do a quick let's just do a quick experiment here where we 
click on an image tag and you can see that little red dot tells you that it's clicking all over the place. So this one is even finer than the mesh that we brought in before. However, the mesh will perform much better because you don't have as many points and vertices. So those are two examples, getting an image over to a meshed plane and subdividing it in Blender and then bringing it into Vision 3D. And the second option is to use Cloud Compare and you can take any image using the Ellipser app and turn it into a point cloud, export it as an E57 and bring it into Vision 3D and it works just fine. Hope you enjoyed that one. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time on another tutorial video. Bye-bye.